So I'm over here at my Highland Terrarium. It's too early for the timer to have triggered the light to turn on, so there's not much to see in there right now. What I am here for is to fix the chiller. So maybe some of you have seen some of my previous videos where I showed my Highland Terrarium, but it's basically a chilled terrarium where I grow Highland Nepenthes because given the nighttime chilling, it's able to cycle the temperature in a manner similar to the high elevation tropics where these plants grow. The way it works is I have an aquarium chiller here. It's kind of a budget one. It's not a fancy one that chills a pool of distilled water down there. Uh, and then the fan, which you can hear going, blows air across it and the air gets cooled and the nighttime temperature drops adequately. Under normal circumstances, the water cools to something like 45 degrees and the air cools to something like 55 degrees. During the day, I leave the fan on because it stops the light from raising the daytime temperatures too high. But with the light on and the chiller off, it doesn't keep it as cold as it does at night, so you get the required temperature changes as well. Now the problem with buying a budget chiller like this is it might break. I mean, you kind of get what you pay for. And well, here's what happened. So I was away for the summer. I just came here during the day once a week to mess with my plants, uh, water them, check that they were okay, do any pruning that was needed, that kind of thing. And uh, the chiller triggers at 11 o'clock at night. So I was never here when it turned on or when it turned off. And as a result, uh, I didn't technically know if it was working. Everything seemed healthy though. A few weeks before the end of the summer, the leaves on my Nepenthes atenborii started to change color some, but it kept growing. The pitchers that it and the loei were growing, however, had weirdly small lids. And I think these were linked with the chiller failing right around then. So there was no serious risk, but the health wasn't as pristine. And I wondered what had happened when I came back for the school year and the first night happened and it didn't turn on. Well, I learned what had happened. Now, the entire thing was dead. Nothing would turn on. The dial and buttons wouldn't do anything. And when everything is absolutely dead, uh, well, that suggests the first place to look is the power supply. So I unscrewed it and pulled that off and looked at the power supply. You can see it's not in there. I've taken it out. This is the actual cooler unit. That's the control uh, unit. And then the power supply unit was right there. This is the old power supply unit. Let's see if I can open this up one-handed. Maybe. But probably not, just a minute. Okay, here we go. This is the power supply unit. You see this big burn mark right here. That is the surge protection thermistor, or was. Now that's, I think, a positive coefficient thermistor. For those of you who don't know, a thermistor is a resistor whose resistance changes as a function of temperature. In a surge protection application, they'll use a thermistor whose resistance goes up with increasing temperature. So if you get extra current through it, that heats it up and decreases the ability of current to flow through it in principle protecting it from surges. However, it can run kind of hot and apparently something happened that caused it to overheat and it burned up. There was the charred remains which I've removed and then the circuit board got burned. This is on the direct input terminals for the power before it goes into any of the transformer equipment inside. Now, I don't know what caused it to do this. It may have been a surge that was bigger than it could handle. One guess I did have, and I don't know that I'm really qualified to guess about this. If we look over here on the cooler unit, we see these metal plates, which you can see through there, that dissipate heat. And it seems like, I've cleaned most of it off now, but dust had built up on those, blocking them off. 
Now, I don't really know the, the how this particular cooling unit operates, but it kind of made me wonder if blocking that off didn't cause it to somehow draw more current because it couldn't cool as well and so tried to up the cooling power or something. For all I know, that's a misunderstanding of how this works, but it is the case that I cleaned it off just to avoid that happening again, assuming I am right. I guess I should probably clean this off a little better because that's still blocking things, but that's, that's for later. So um, I looked at the reviews of this, which I should have done beforehand, and it seems like a lot of other people had the same problem and there was one review that said you could buy new power supplies easily, that they were modular, which I guess isn't surprising, but not something I had thought of. Um, I did also write a negative comment explaining the issue with the thermistor burning up. Um, and ultimately I did buy a new power supply and it got here today and I'm going to try and install it. So the problem is it did get crushed a little I'm not aware of that affecting its functionality. Not Nothing I can see suggests that that's the case. But, um, you know, I guess we'll find out soon enough. I might try and open this up first and show you the surge protection thermistor in this one before I do that. Okay, so here is what I suppose is the surge protection thermistor. It's in the same spot, seems connected up in the same way, but instead of RT, which I think stands for resettable thermistor, is the designation F1, which I am not familiar with. There is some writing on it. I'll see if I can read that. Well, that's what it looks like. I'm sure those symbols make it clear to somebody watching this video exactly what that is, I will have to look it up. Huh. I'm not sure they even sent me exactly what I ordered, because what I ordered had fewer terminals. But I think this will still work. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. Might not fit in as easily but that's okay, I suppose. Otherwise, you can see that the construction of the new and old power supplies is extremely similar, although not quite exactly the same. I might bother to leave the crushed lid off. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, let's install it and see if the chiller works again. I suppose one other thing to remember to do before actually trying to turn anything on is making sure that switch is set correctly. For example, I need to switch it from the 220 setting to the 110 setting. Okay, job done. Let's wire this up. I'm thrilled. The power supply is in and the chiller is working. I thought I was going to get uh, burned for having bought a cheap chiller. I mean, I'm a grad student. I kind of didn't have a lot of choice, but I thought I was going to uh, either have to just buy another cheap chiller and hope that it didn't fail or... I was going to have to buy an expensive one or just try growing Highland Nepenthes without them or something. My options didn't seem good given the size of my budget, but this got the job done. This is very exciting. The light still hasn't turned on, so I guess I can't really show you what's in there, but it looks not much different than the last time. The plants are a bit bigger and the Attenborei are a slightly different color as I was explaining. I'll do an update once the chilling has had an effect and the pitchers that grow on the Loei and the Attenborei, I can't remember if the Raja was doing that, are, are normal, i.e. don't have small lids. So if you are growing Highland Nepenthes in a terrarium on a budget and you're thinking about a budget chiller, it is still a viable option because it probably is just the power supply failing and that is easy to get. This was only $20. It's really actually a reasonable thing um, and keep those fins clear because um, again I'm not sure but that may have been the root cause that that's certainly oh ooh, the light turn that's certainly what I'm going to uh, watch out for and the light just turned on so I suppose I'll uh, pack up the chiller a little more and then show you what I was talking about with the small pitcher lids and the slightly different colored Attenborei leaves. One thing to note about the replacement power supply that I've got here 
is that since it has those extra terminals that I wasn't expecting, its size is larger and I couldn't fit it in in the same orientation exactly as the old power supply, which prevents me from actually screwing it in because the holes then aren't aligned. However, I'm not planning on moving it around a lot, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But just something to note, if you have the same problem and also get a power supply that's a bit too big, either accidentally or because you can't find one that's only the four terminal one, except for the input power, of course. Okay, so you can see over there, there's the small pitcher lids that was something that was consistently happening. I guess it isn't happening on the Raja. That Attenborii picture right there, that looks like it's part of the Raja, actually connects to this Attenborii grew before there was a problem. And the leaves just look less, somewhat less vibrant. I suppose, though, not as much as it was, even though I only just fixed the chiller. So, whatever. And you can see over there, a similar thing happened on that lowy eye picture right there. Nothing stopped growing though, or exhibited any serious health issues. I think it was still able to shut off its metabolism at night because the temperature drop associated with the light was enough to trigger that. So while it wasn't ideal for the health of the plants, the temperature wasn't, you know, its favorite really cool temperature, but it was still able to keep going reasonably well for the amount of time it took me to realize there was a problem and fix it and now it should be good to go anyway i hope this video was interesting thanks for watching okay so two updates here first of all it's several hours later it's now the end of the day it's after the time when it would normally trigger and start cooling the terrarium there and it did in fact turn on it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do and at the end of the chilling period this morning, when I filmed most of this, and when I installed the power supply, it uh, was cooling. It went down a few degrees, so I don't see why it wouldn't work well now. But, um, of course, I'm going to keep an eye on it. The one other thing that's worth noting is I decided actually not to keep that cover on here. I want to make as sure as possible that two things happen. One, that any heat that's produced in there can escape as easily as possible. And second, that I don't forget about keeping those radiator fins clean. If nothing else, it makes it more effective. But then also, as I was explaining earlier, there's some chance that that had to do with its failure to begin with. Okay, so I'm back over here the next morning for one final update. It's now nearly 24 hours after I filmed the first part of the video and the chiller has successfully brought the water pool down to base temperature which is exactly 46 degrees rather than the 45 that I said earlier but that's not really much of a difference for the plants anyway so I suppose this is job done then this is very satisfying if we look over here the water lines leading particularly leading out of the chiller, but also leading into it have condensation on them, which is kind of fun.